I want to do today is just talk a little bit to you about my personal experience of being a host mother. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the background. Um, my background is I'm, I'm married to Luciano, who is, he's, both his parents are Italian, but he uh, was born in England, so he grew up with the famous English um, language. Uh, although it was very difficult to start for him in school, he, when he started in school he hadn't got one word of English, so he was very much challenged like a lot of the students that I imagine come here to Ireland. So we have one beautiful son whose name is Adam and he's 15 years of age and I suppose he is the reason that I'm a host mother and that is because I felt it would be a really good experience for him to meet and be forced into situations that he wouldn't otherwise come to have as a, a normal everyday experience. So it was really for him that I gave in to deciding to try to do this host and mothering. So uh, the first thing I did was I made a phone call to the great Anna here in the Slaney Language Centre. I can't pronounce your name. <laughs> <laughs> the reason she can is I very rarely use the, the surname Minakuchi. I normally go under my maiden name which is Cunningham because everybody goes, huh? Minakuchi? Huh? Where did that come from? And in 20 minutes on the phone, I'm going, yes, yeah. So I just, I just normally go under Cunningham, so you're forgiven, Anna, there's no problem. <laughs> So the, the call was made and Anna said, look, I'll come out and um, I'll meet with you in your home. And that in itself can be actually quite intimidating. You feel, oh my God, I'm going to be judged. I should have painted that wall. I you, know, you know, and you're wondering what is it that you're going to be judged on. And, you know, so you, you go around and you clean places that were never cleaned. <laughs> One miracle did happen, and that was my husband cut the grass before she got there. <laughs> so, um, but the application process was quite simple, um, and it brought me through what was expected as um, a host mother, what the school expected you know you to do, and um, she spoke a little bit about the students that come over, and then what my role would be in in, in uh, helping the students and that. So, and then of course you your guard are vetted as well. So. Um, it's all very, uh, very serious. <laughs> so um, then uh, I got the phone call to say that my first student was arrived. <laughs> it was just so exciting. Um, so what I I did was the school tell you who it is, and you know you're normally given a like an email address. Uh, so you, I always make contact with the student before they come over. And I find that this really helps to break the ice because you're getting a little bit of an insight and you're learning a little bit about them before they come. You know, whether they have brothers, sisters, uh, what their parents might work at, and uh, what they're hoping to, to gain. They, 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 it gives them the opportunity to then to ask questions of you, you know, what, what they should bring clothes wise. And, you know, uh, I, I tell them that I always tell them we have a dog. Um, Charlie is a big part of our family and he's. A brilliant icebreaker when the students come as well. So when you when you send the email, you probably you know you have a paragraph or two. This is me, and then do you have a little list of questions? No, no, no. I say um, you know, hi, I'm Regina. I'm really looking forward to you coming to uh, yeah. my home. Um, uh, you know, um, you know that I have a son who's Adam, and we have we have a dog here called Charlie. And then they and just respond I keep it very same. simple. Yeah. I keep it very simple to, to try and gauge how much English they have mm -hmm. when they reply back. Mm -hmm. They just tell you naturally. About yes, that. yeah. Okay. And so, um, and, and then I, I normally ask them, well, I, I used to ask in the early stages, you know, what do you like to eat? I gave up asking that. <laughs> because you can often get like lots of, uh, I don't like this, I don't like that. And, oh no, that's yeah. the main ingredient of that dish that I normally do. What can I put in instead of that? So, um, you know, from, from that point of view, it just does give you a little bit of a, an idea of the student before the, uh, the student, um, you know, gets to you, which is yeah, very helpful, really. Um, 
So then there's meeting the student for the first time. And I don't know whether this is me or the student. <laughs> because I actually do get nervous when I'm meeting the student because I, I don't know what to expect. I don't know really until I start communicating with them how much English they have or they, they haven't got. And uh, also, I always imagine they're coming from these mad, beautiful castles in France. Or <laughs> and they're going to be coming into my little kennel of a house. And, you know, it's all about, you know, what, 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 what are they going to think about this? Um, but I'm always very mindful that they themselves must be very, very nervous. And I'm the adult here, so, you know, I'm very, very mindful of the fact that everything is strange to them, especially if it's their first visit into, you know, into uh, Ireland. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, they're, uh, it, driving, we're driving on the wrong side of the road, um, you know, they're listening to an accent that they probably haven't heard before, they're trying to understand what is it that she's trying to say. Um, so, you know, I'm very mindful of all that. And then, from here on the way into my home, I happen to pass by the bus stop that they're going to be taken to get here. And I always point out, well, this is the bus stop. And I'm the whole time trying to gauge how much are they understanding. And I point out the hospital, not that they'll need the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> um, but I point it out as a landmark, you know, so that kind of try and immediately try to get there. <laughs> The hospital is on the route, I don't go in. <laughs> Just to let you know. <laughs> so, um, so then, when the student arrives, um, one thing I will admit to is, um, you know, I, any time I go away to a hotel, I steal all the shampoos. And <laughs> I put them in the rooms when the students are coming. So, <laughs> so I give them a little, like a, uh, body wash and shampoo and um, if it's a girl coming I'd put in a little shower cap you know so, uh, and I, I have the duvet will be there you know pink or brighter than if it's a boy coming I'll change the duvet to a darker colour um, and change the curtains in, in the room and things like that just to make it feel a bit more uh, at home. Well one thing I, I decided before I did this was that I was going to do this the way I would want another parent to treat my one and only son. Um, <laughs> and, and then everything is simple. There's no, you know, there's no, there's no <laughs> arguments going on in your head. It's like, well, how would you want somebody to treat Adam if they were gone? So you do the best that you can. Yeah. So the first thing they always ask is, yeah. we feed? <laughs> <laughs> And this is where the first bit of humor really comes, and I always say, no. <laughs> no, 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 Because they would have been told like, that we have white and So that's, that's the very first question that they really ask with any kind of intent, yeah. is the Wi-Fi. And then I go on and I explain how things work, like the shower, you know, you've pull this cord or press that button, the water is going to fall out of, um, you know, out of, onto the ground, so put this cloth down. And I've also brought him down and showed him how to lock and unlock the door because on several occasions it hasn't been done properly yeah. and the burglars would have a field day stealing my television, which is the only valuable I have. <laughs> so, um, and then I tried to discover ahead of the morning what their food likes and dislikes. So it will depend on their, their language, how much English they have. So I, I mind things like, you know, are you hungry? <laughs> and I want a drink. <laughs> so I open the cupboard and show them the cereals that I have, or I open the fridge and say, would you prefer eggs maybe in the morning? So I just get a sense of what they want just for the first day. Mm -hmm. And I always as well have a pen and paper, because inevitably a lot of them forget to bring a pen and paper. And then in the morning they're like, I haven't anything to write when I go to school, so I always have a little notebook and a pen there just in case that they <laughs> just in case that they might, they might uh, forget. And then the surprise. I'm lactose intolerant <laughs> or something like that. Oh my god. <laughs> Initially at the beginning it was like 
it was a trauma. This was like, what is this? But now it's perfectly fine. I'm, I'm ready, I'm able, I'm calm. I don't cry anymore in front of me. <laughs> but uh, all of this is really about making the connection with them. I really try and make that connection with them and, um, you know, let them see that, um, you know, we're here to help them have a really nice, positive experience. So, during the time that I spend with me, I encourage the use of the language in little sneaky kind of ways. Um, <laughs> I, I like to cook, and so I'm often, I get home before, I always try to be the last one out of the house before they leave so that they're not, you know, they're, I'm there. And I try to be home before they get home, because I work as well. But I'm lucky, I, 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 I'm self-employed to a degree. <laughs> um, and so I, I, I'm flexible, you know, I, and I try to get home before they get in. So I'm often there cooking when they come in. And I begin asking them how their day went. And um, I, what I used to do was try to finish their sentence for them because they looked, they looked painful trying to tell me. <laughs> now I stop and I listen and I just wait and give them a chance to find the word. And sometimes if they find the wrong word, I'll tell them what the right word is. So as I'm cooking, then I say to them, oh, I'm, I'm cooking this. Do you like mushrooms? And I'll say, I'll show you what the mushroom looks like, you know. Um, do you like onions? And I'll go, and I'll go onions. <laughs> Onion. And then, um, and then I, 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 I'd say, do you like, potato? do you like potatoes? And they more more than likely know what that means. But then I, 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 I do something that you would probably go crazy about. I say, this really is called spuds. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, <laughs> so, and then, you know, I, obviously I do all their washing and that for them when they're, when they're here. And I, I try, I had got one Italian guy who thought I was uh, able to wash for him every single day and yeah. dry his clothes and give them back to him. So I had to try and explain that, you know, once or twice a week, there's no problem, I can wash your clothes for you. So I, I you know, talked to him about laundry. This is the laundry basket. Put your dirty laundry in here. This is, you know, the utility room. I'll do your washing here and, and, and that type of thing. And then, Aside from that, as I said to you, we have a dog, so I often invite them to come walking with me up to the race course in uh, Wexford here. And that really gives it an opportunity then to talk about things outside. Like I say, this is the race course, there's horses, uh, the horses run here. Do you like what animal is your favourite animal? Mm -hmm. And that, and we walk around, it's a mile long, it takes 20 minutes. So it's not excruciating for them. <laughs> <laughs> So, these are some of my lovely students. This is Charlie, our dog. And Charlie is a brilliant icebreaker. He's, he loves children and they absolutely love him. But, you know, I thought that these students were going to come and help with my son. But really what they did is they've really been an inspiration to me. It's, they're incredible. This little fella here is called Antoine and he's only 14 years of age. And he's going to be a pilot, and there's absolutely no way, uh, two ways about it. He needs 22 hours flying time in order to qualify as a, to, to, to fly on his own a Cessna airplane. He's already done seven hours. Oh. He has done exams, uh, he's one of the youngest people to, to, to pass these exams in, uh, in France. And uh, he's just a, an amazing, clever, bright young boy. This is Celia. She stayed with me for a couple of weeks this past summer. And watch out for her because she's going to be something amazing. She's a beautiful... You can actually even see in the picture, that's her, captures her. She just walks into a room and she is like, just brings the whole room alive. Her English, by the way, is excellent. And one thing I've found about these students is that they're absolutely passionate about learning the language. And they really appreciate the opportunity of learning the language because they, they really believe that by learning this language, it's opening up a massive world of opportunity for them mm -hmm. and to, to work elsewhere all over. So it's, um, it, they're, they're, they're amazing. 
This is uh, last summer I stupidly handed over my kitchen. <laughs> uh, no, I wasn't stupid. <laughs> Um, all the boys came around for a big, big uh, traditional meal, not an Irish traditional meal, uh, <laughs> but it was a, a Spanish traditional meal. They were going to cook for themselves. They went off to Tesco's, they bought everything that they needed. And um, I just demonstrated how not to blow yourself up with them. <laughs> and, um, and I left them too, and I, I, I stayed in the other room. I said, look, you know where I am. If you need me, I opened up the back. And it was a beautiful evening. They were all out there, about 10 or 11 of them, all outside having um, this lovely meal that they had cooked and great laughter coming through. And it was, it was lovely. Mm. Now, this is where the work does come in. You know, when you're a host mother, I really do feel that you shouldn't be a host mother unless you're willing to share your time with the students. And so Sunday is the day that's family day. And um, so with these students here, I brought them off to the outdoor adventure park for a, you know, a trip. And they had an absolute ball and they really enjoyed it. And they had to listen and understand before they went up on all the dangerous sky ropes and all this, uh, what the instructor was saying. And I had to stop and say, do you understand everything that the instructor is saying? <laughs> uh, yes, I, I absolutely understand. <laughs> you know, so, um, so they had a ball. And then these, it, it, it just, these are two Austrian girls that stayed with me and it was a, it's like a reminder of how lucky we are to be surrounded by so many beautiful beaches and stuff. These are from Austria, no beach, landlocked. Oh, yeah. And it was like, wow, well, I mean, this is beautiful. This is Coraclo in Wexford, if any of you have a chance to go down and have a look at it. It's absolutely a lovely place. And uh, they, they, they loved it, you know. Um, so, now, just a little bit about my running over. <laughs> so I can quickly, quickly no, say this, uh, the difference between short stay and long stay in um, my eyes mm -hmm. is that a short stay student arrives normally in the summertime, it's nice bright evenings, mm -hmm. uh, they have the language school in the morning, they have lovely activities that they love in the afternoon and then in the evening time there's always a couple of things organised for them mm -hmm. and the, the evenings that there's not anything, they'll all meet up in the church up the road from me that has a bit of a green area and they kick the ball around and have a great time. Mm -hmm. And um, so, so their activities are all um, pretty organised. This is Nic Nicholas, and he is from uh, Madrid, and he's staying with me at the moment. He's in transition year in Adamstown School. Now, Nicholas will be with me for 13 weeks. He leaves in December, and he's here now in his uniform. I took this picture, and I sent it to his mother the first day, <laughs> so she'd have a picture of him going to school. And it was his birthday a couple of weeks ago, so I invited all of his friends around, and we had a lovely pizzas and, and chips and hot dogs and a, and a cake. <laughs> But the, the difference with the long stay is you really do have to help the student really a lot more because I know that he liked football so I, I said to my husband, listen, will you see, will they let him go training with him, you know, the football team mm -hmm. then go training a couple of nights a week and then he likes the gym so I made a few phone calls around to the gym to see what was the cheapest membership and I think you need to do those little things because, you know, he's 14 going on, he's 15 actually. Um, and they're a long way from home, and they do need you to help them, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, some suggestions for school. <laughs> 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 I honestly believe that host families and potential host families should meet up in a setting like this at the very beginning of your your stint. Yeah. yeah, so maybe you're in February. Yeah. Yeah. And so that the potential families can get to listen to the host families talk about things that might or might not come up. Yeah. But also for the school to give the host families an idea of what the curriculum is going to be taught in the class. Yeah. So that the host family can try and help maybe a bit more uh, in that regard at home. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think the, the host family needs to know how they can contribute to the whole experience that it's not just the school, it's not just the teachers, it's not just the activities outside, that everybody wants or are trying to achieve the same thing. That these students have a lovely positive experience, that they go away speaking the language better than they arrived, 
and I see that because initially they'll be thinking about what you're saying, they're trying to digest it and then answer back. By the time they leave, it's so much more fluent. Mm -hmm. They're able to answer you so much quicker because they, they don't have to think so hard about what it, you know, so those sort of things. And expect more from the host family. You know, tell the host family, listen, you know, we don't just want you to be a B&B &B and put a meal on the table. We would really need your help here to, you know, help the students and don't be afraid to tell them. We need you to be on board with it. Suggestions from the teachers. <laughs> yes. I really think that you need to put yourself into the shoes of the students, especially those that have never been here before or have very little English. And the things outside of the school that you can, you know, don't really control, like the host family's control, but are the likes of the food and accommodation needs. But if a student can't tell you that they're freezing because they've come from 40 degrees in Madrid <laughs> and you don't have enough blankets on the bed, you, that's a simple basic thing, but they might be able to convey it or might be afraid or not have the confidence. Mm -hmm. I love that your first class was to do this with the students. To say, isn't the host family, because we had a meeting there, or you with all the host <laughs> families, and they're expecting you to go back now and tell them if you have enough blankets, if you need another pillow, if the room is too cold, or whatever, or your, you know, the food. Directions is absolutely essential. The very first student I got was Laura from Spain, and Laura hadn't five words of English. And luckily, Anna had said to me, get her phone number, get all the students' phone number before they leave, and thank God I did. Because I got a phone call from her on the first day, and she said, Regina, lost. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I could feel the panic rising. And I said, okay, Laura, where are you? Mm, yes. Uh, can you tell me where you are? Round about. <laughs> so anybody who's from Metro Boulevard, there's lots around. Okay, uh, Laura, is there a is you know is there a building like a church or a school? Yes, yes. I said what, Laura? What building? Yes. <laughs> So please do the directions. <laughs> so I had to get in the car and drive around with her on a hands free trying to find her. And I, I did find her and everything was fine. <laughs> and then health terms, because honestly I've had in I've been doing this only a year and a half and I've had two students that were sick. One of them needed a doctor twice. And they did have very good English, but you know, just to cover things like I have a headache, I'm nauseous. I feel like I would vomit or whatever. It's just important that us as host mothers know that the child can tell us that those sort of things. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I have to brag now. <laughs> this is a thank you card that I got from one of the students and as you can see it's a homemade one which yeah. really means an awful lot to me. And uh, I'll read it because it's not my right here there. It says, Dear Regina, Luciano and Adam, I'm writing this letter to say a big thank you. Thank you for your hospitality, for your kindness. Actually, at the beginning, I was a bit afraid, but now I would do this experience over 1,000 times. Aww. Yeah, I miss you so much. I will miss time spent with you. I will miss your love. I thought, I thought the Irish couldn't cook. <laughs> Gina's dishes, I don't think it anymore. <laughs> I know it. No, I, I learned a lot about your culture, your way of living, and I appreciate it. It has been a great time here in the green country, and I'll never forget this month. Thank you for everything. Love, Ricardo. Aww. person may not remember the food that they had or the accommodation that they had, but they will always make remember the way that you made them feel. And I think that's important for all of us. Thank you.